Welcome back to your favorite show, Baking with Chef Tony. Today I'm going to show you just the technique and tricks how to best fold your croissants. How to make croissants. What do you need? It's very easy and simple. You just need your puff paste. In this episode, I'm going to use ready-made puff pastry that you can get in your local retailers. You can get it ready-made, frozen, but in the next episode, I will show you how to make your own at home. For now, for this production, I will have to use ready-made one. So, what you need, you just need the puff pastry. You need your cheese, your chocolate, your egg, flour for dusting, and your cutters, your brush, that's all. So the main thing is the fast pastry. All these other things is for the flavor of the croissant that you want. You want a chocolate, you will use chocolate. You want a cheese one, you will use cheese. And the egg is just for that shiny finish. So, how you do it? It's easy. I will show you the whole process up until to the baking. So, we're going to be folding in this uh, episode. I will show you how to fold it. How to make a circle. So, what do you do? You roll it out. It's ready made this one. So it's quick and easy to use. So you don't have this other thing folding and see, waiting for for 12 hours like the if you are making from scratch. Because you have to fold it several times before it comes to this. So I will show you in the next episode how to make your own uh, puff pastry for your croissants. So the trick is just in the cutting, the shape. How you cut your croissants. So when you just make sure it's, it's all equal, those corners. Just to make it perfect. So, what do you do? We're gonna be making a few cocktail ones and uh, uh, a few big ones. So, what, how you do it? It's easy. So, you need to cut triangles, acute triangles. Acute. What do I mean? It means your your your, your angle. Your other angles must be uh, sitting uh, acute on them. They must be well clothed. Oh, it's a sharp triangle. I can say with one side that is very sharp, sitting on one equal part, equal angles at the bottom. I think I, 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 I'm not a good mathematician, but I think my jargon is right. The bottom angles must be equal. So the top angle must be sustained with two equal angles at the bottom. So your triangle must have two equal sides, equal angles at the bottom. I get I think you will get it right in my presentation. So what do you do? You cut. So it's something like this. So it means these bottom angles, this angle and this angle, are equal. And you get what I'm saying? The top one is sustained. So the triangle is 180 degrees. All, all the angles. So if it's 45 here, it's 45 here, then it will be something there. That's all. So. What do you do? You cut just like that. So you have your different shapes. Different. 
So if you want your uh, croissant to be big, it means your bottom must be long. So the longer the bottom of your triangle stand, the bigger the croissant. So what do you do? You take the straight part, you roll it in. So this one will be a plain croissant. So what do you do? You move. It will take its own shape. There you have your croissant. Again, we want to make two plain ones. Then, just like this. So it will take its own shape on its own. It's just like a machine. There we go. So, if we will make a okay another plain one three plain ones so we have three plain ones you want a cheese one you take your cheese so because you want the cheese to be filled inside you want it to be rich your croissant to be rich so what do you do you put your cheese inside It's just plain pastry. Then you put your cheese inside. You fold your cheese inside. So when you are baking, the cheese will be melting all over inside. Then on top, you will have to put other cheese just to make it more rich. So, another cheese one. Fold. Fold, fold, fold. It's a bigger croissant. Uh, one, two, three. So we need another chisel. And remember, the croissant you bake 180, 180 degrees for 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes but the oven as usual it depends with the type of oven that you have so you must really know your oven then we have three cheese then we want chocolate what do you do it's either you use chocolate ganache or chocolate nibs so I will, in this pre for presentation set, I will use both so that you know. So if you are using nibs, chocolate nibs, you just put your nibs on inside. Then you fold them in. There we go. When you are baking, you have to put so, but it, you will notice it when it's baking, the, chi, the uh, uh, chocolate will come out, so it will show you already, is it a chocolate or is it cheese? If it's cheese, cheese will start melting, then you will see if it's a plain, nothing comes out. But for it to be rich, if it's a cheese, you have to put other cheese on top before you bake. When you are baking, you put on, or chocolate, you just put a piece of chocolate on top so that it will just be rich and melt out. Uh, if you use, so this one was the chocolate nibs, but if you don't have chocolate nibs, maybe you use the chocolate nibs to make ganache. You take your ganache again, you take your ganache, then you put it inside, you spread it nicely. Then you fold.
the easy chocolate croissant. Then the last one, just to have, to have a nice shape. It's chocolate again. Very easy. And remember, you can make several croissants. If you want, you have feta, spinach and feta, whatever you, you, you feel like you want. You can put inside and fold it in. The folding the technique is the same. Then there we have our croissant. How you do it? You take your pen. You lay them in. The cheese, the cheese. The cheese. The plain one. The plain one. The plain. The chocolate. The chocolate. The chocolate. There you have your croissant. And what do you do after this? You egg wash them. You take an egg, make egg wash. So you can put a little, just a little water, so that your egg is not so rich that when you are baking, the egg starts burning or turning color. Then you will think your kusan is done before it's done. So the water, it's a perfect measure. It gives you a perfect sense of charging. So when it's really brown, golden brown, with water, egg with water, it's really baked. So if the egg is you've got no water, it will give you sometimes a false judgment. Then you think your croissant is baked while it's not, it's just the egg that is, the egg wash that is uh, uh, turning the, the, the color. So what you do, you just, and after this, you just let the, your croissants rest so that they improve a little bit because well, since you are pressing pressing then they will be flat but you egg wash the whole croissant nicely Completely covered with egg wash. Must be completely egg washed. There you have it. So, one eighty for twenty to twenty five minutes, depending on your oven. But for now, you have to give it just a a rest like 10 minutes just to prove and compose themselves so that when you put them in the oven they will give that lift of a croissant because they are like this but when they they bake they will puff more when it's puff pastry so they will puff so to give them that puff that raise that fluffiness you have to let them rest a little to prove if you have a prover you can put them in the prover just for 10 minutes or 8, eight to 10 minutes. Then they give that, then it gives them a lift. Then you bake uh, without steam. Do not steam. There is egg wash already. Egg wash will deal with the steaming part. So, cheers for now. See you in the next episode where I will be showing you a baked croissant. And you know what I mean together you know what i mean we're gonna be doing it together eating nibbling and enjoying i won't leave you all together we are there together all the way so see you in the next episode your resident chef signing out chef Tonde. don't forget to subscribe comment down below follow us on all our socials baking with chef Tonde. cheers see you Tizao na napa next episode, tumabiranjito, siya tokoza. Cheers! At mwene signing out.